let's look at the first example over here. So we can um, draw a diagram. So let's look at the problem first. We want to make sure we understand the problem first. So we drop a pin, um, like what you see in one of the advertisements of Sprint, and assuming that the pin is dropped on to a desk at a random. And then let x be the direction it points to. Assume that every direction is equally likely. That means a fair pin and a fair drop. We want to determine the density function of this random variable x. Okay. Now, we understand the density function represents essentially how likely for x to take the values over there. And we can try to draw a pin over here. Um, so this is the pin. This is a direction. So the value, if we look at this direction, we can use the angle. So this is going to be the angle over here. This angle over here is x. So we design a random variable, x over here is angle. Now, we know we are going to use calculus, so we have to use radian. So x over here, radian, that means it's between 0 and 2 pi. Okay. And 2 pi is the same angle as 0, so we use a parenthesis over here. But it doesn't really matter. Okay. And then we are going to look at um, the function of the density function, f of x or f of t doesn't really matter. We use f of x. Okay. What it means is that between 0 and 2 pi, all the values are equally likely, but we know there are infinitely many. So we cannot use a discrete probability to describe this random variable. And what we need to do is we need to look at f of x over here as a function. So it's going to be a constant if x is inside 0 to pi. Okay. And we know f of x is going to be 0 outside if x is not inside 0 and 2 pi. So that's going to be the density function we are looking for. Now we know one thing is that when we integrate from negative infinity to positive infinity f of x dx, this density function has to be equal to 1. Now because the interval length over here is 2 pi, so according to um, uh, the property of definite integral, what we need over here is just a constant c so that this area over here is equal to 1. And so we know c must be equal to 1 over 2 pi. So that's the density function for this x. Once we have the density function, then we can find the probability distribution function. Uh, sometimes we also say this is the cumulative distribution function, the CDF. Okay. So how do we do that? And then we have f of x over here. We have f of x is 1 over 2 pi if x is between 2 pi and 0. And it's going to be 0 if x is not inside this, x is either less than 0 or x is bigger than or equal to 2 pi. The graph we have seen over here, so we have this graph over here. This is the function of this density function. Okay. And because f of x is discontinuous, we have two discontinuity points over here. So to find capital f of x, we need to look at different intervals as well. So we remember that the cumulative distribution function f of x, little x, is the integral from negative infinity to little x. 
and we put f of t over here because we don't want to confuse ourselves. t over here is the dummy variable. So if you look at this integral, then we have three different cases. If x is less than or equal to zero, then we see this integral over here must be zero because there's nothing you can actually accumulate. Between negative infinity and x, x is less than or equal to zero, there's nothing over there, this is zero. Okay. Now, if x is between two pi and zero, uh, zero, then we have this integral over here to look at. So we have over here, this is two pi, okay. and this is x between zero and two pi, and this one over here is the density function is the value. So what we have is this area. So you can actually see how to integrate it, but on the other hand, we see we just need to use the base times height. So it's the base is x times the height, which is 1 over 2 pi, right? So that's the answer we have if x is between 0 and 2 pi. Now what if x is bigger than 2 pi? The answer has to be 1. It's not 0. The density function is 0, but cumulative function isn't because it's accumulating. In fact, you can see the graph of this f of x. After you finish the computation, it increases all the time. So this is between 0 and 2 pi, between 0 and 2 pi, right? And this is the function of your cumulative distribution function. Here you get a zero because nothing to accumulate, okay? And then after zero, you have a linear function, so x over 1 over 2 pi. Okay, so this is a 1. And after that, it's going to be 1. Okay, so this point over here is a 1, okay? If we have a continuous random variable, the cumulative distribution function is always continuous. We may have few points not differentiable, but it has to be continuous. That's why um, we don't really need to be very careful about um, the uh, this uh, less than or equal to kind of stuff because uh, it's always continuous at these connecting points. Now, once we have the density function, that's the main thing about a continuous random variable, it's easy to find the expected value. We simply try to remember the formula. So um, expected value, usually we use a bracket over here, and that's just going to be the integral from negative infinity to positive infinity x, and multiplied by the density function of your random variable. And because our little f of x is non-zero over the interval zero to two pi. So we only need to integrate this integrand from zero to two pi. And then the function's value is one over two pi dx. Okay. And when we integrate, we have one over two pi and one half x squared, plug in two pi and zero. And then we will have one over two pi and one half and then two pi squared. So we're gonna have one half two pi and that's gonna be equal to pi. Now, in fact, we know the meaning of the expected value means probability averaged mean. All right, we continue. Um, because the value is between zero and a two pi, and every value is of equal chance. So we know the mean value of this random variable is pi, should be pi. Okay. Now to find the expected value of a function of this random variable, it's just another problem of integration. As long as we know how to set it up, this is pretty easy to do. So now we have this u of capital X, okay? And that's simply x squared. And then we integrate from negative infinity to positive infinity, a little x squared. See the difference. We use capital X 
to denote the random variable. But when we integrate to find expected value, use little x okay, and f of x and dx. Since f of x is the same, so we still have from 0 to 2 pi, and then we have x squared and 1 over 2 pi and dx, right? So integrate this, we have 1 over 2 pi and 1 third x cubed and plug in 2 pi and 0. So we have 1 over 2 pi, 1 third, and then we have 2 pi cubed, and that's going to be um, 8 pi cubed over 6 pi, and then we will see we will have 4 pi squared over 3. All right, that's it for example one.